He's like right, right there. Made him pair of barred owls. I was trying to strike up a gobble and I caught in these two owls instead. It's uh, the day before opening day down here in central Florida. I'm down here hunting with my buddy Doug Updike again, if you guys remember from last spring, Doug and I hunted down here together. Um, we're out here just doing some listening this morning. He's about a mile or so away from me, parked, listening. And it's just, just getting good light. These owls going crazy. But anyway, I haven't heard any gobbles yet. I'm gonna start kind of moving around. Maybe drive to another spot and see what I hear. And we're gonna strategize. Hopefully come up with a game plan tomorrow morning. direction it was. Okay. I can't get him to gobble again, but I know where he's at, so that's all that matters. We're gonna zip on down the road and see if we can find another one. We'll start marking all these spots and we've got backup birds if our morning setup tomorrow morning doesn't work out. Well, how goes it, Dougie? Pretty good. I heard a couple, three. Three, I heard a couple myself. You see them? Don't shoot until I tell you to. Don't shoot until I tell you to. I said, don't shoot until I tell you to. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Premature shootation. <laughs> well, I'm surprised you couldn't hear the, the gobblers because uh, they were right between us. Mm -hmm. And um, it's exactly where they were yesterday. That's why it was pretty cool to get out here and pinpoint them again. Yeah. I heard one early on that was real far off. And I went closer to it and um, didn't hear it when I went closer. So I moved on down the road a little bit more and got close to a horse pasture and stopped there and went and got out in the owl hood and he gobbled uh, just inside the woods, probably about 100 yards, 150 yards. So I think we're gonna be in good standing. Yeah, the now I run into them two guys. I had a truck come by me early in the dark, but it was a pickup truck and he was going to kind of where I thought, you know, they might be gobbling. Yeah. And then I read your text that you hadn't heard anything, so I moved up, and when I got out to check, man, they were gobbling. Then that second one was gobbling, and they were gobbling pretty good, and I kept texting you. And then I got in the truck, because it was so foggy, I figured I'll just drive by them and go look for something else, and that's when I run into them two guys. But I talked to them, and apparently they... <laughs> You know, it's public land there. Oh yeah. yeah, you guys can have it. Yeah, right. Yeah. We've got several birds located, folks, and so uh, I think Doug and I have a good chance of getting on the bird in the morning. And we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna go check out one spot that you heard some yesterday, mm -hmm. or saw, actually saw. Saw a strutter and another gobbler and three hens. So they're roosted on the public and they're going into the private. So we're gonna try and get in there midday and find out look at the area where they're roosting and maybe try and set up in an intersection point. Yeah, even if, um, I mean, even if we could get kind of 
you know, between them and where they're going, that would even help us, you know, with the weak calling we have. So, so for you guys that are not familiar with Doug, he and I hunted last year, so you can go back and watch episode one last year. And uh, we had a pretty good hunt last year, didn't we? I don't think this is gonna be like last year. <laughs> I mean, we scouted for 25 minutes, done. Yeah. Went back in the next morning, 25 minutes, done. Killed the bird. Yeah. It was a good time. It was a good, I mean, I don't think it, it could get any easier than that one. Yeah. You know, I've been sitting here talking to you for the last few minutes. And you haven't even bothered looking at my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, listen up. You're on your own. <laughs> you know, that see is that. just so wrong. <laughs> I actually got you one right here in the truck. <laughs> Look at you, man. <laughs> Don't shoot till I tell you. Look that at was you. so dubbed in over the reel. You were sitting there, oh, look out, wait a minute. Don't shoot my Jake. <laughs> I don't recall all that. <laughs> Man, there's another one. Oh, one just got right here. That's what I mean. There's one way over there, too. There's one way off that way. This one's not that far away. This one's not that far. What do you say? I think he's on that wood line over there. sun in our eyes if we set up on that side. It don't matter. It don't matter. He's going to be here before the sun gets way up. Okay. There's a, somebody using a, or doing it with their mouth. We got knuckleheads all around us, it seems like. Like they literally walked right to the goblin. I know they they crow called right on top of where they were gobbling. That's crazy. What they did is they probably actually was trying to sneak up on them. They busted them, and then they crow called to them to come to gobble again. And too late. Who knows? Oh, oh, we know. I'm telling you, there's dead quiet. Yeah, they quit gobbling, and then. Crow call right after. That's gonna do the trick right there. Cluck and turn. You might as well get your gun up and pull that hammer back. <laughs> Scott Hook told me that always cluck and purr. farther away. We're not going to be able to sit here too long. The sun's going to get up and get in our face and slightest movement. Any bird slips in, we're going to be busted. Man, you sure are uplifting. I'm sorry. I'd, you know, I'd be in much higher spirits if we didn't have somebody blowing a crow call right 
over there in the direction those gobblers went. So they're probably gonna you go hear a shot a little bit. They're, they're clucking and purring. And that's why the birds they're are going. They're probably clucking and purring, aren't yeah, they? The birds are going that way. Well, look who showed up for the party. Last year, episode one, I was with Doug Updike. Episode two, I was with my brother Troy. You're down here. He works, he's in the Army, so he's down here doing some training or something. Testing the simulation device out. Okay. And he happened to be about an hour and a half away, so, you know, I told him, come on down, let's visit, get something to bite to eat, and uh, maybe you can go turkey scout with us. So he's with us. We're going to do a little turkey scouting this afternoon, see if we can find some birds for Doug and I's hunt tomorrow morning. This is what I've been waiting to see. These woods are awesome. There's enough openings and thick canopy to prevent all the understory, undercover, from growing. And there's some huge trees in here. I think we could probably just find a place to sit down and listen. Then we won't work up such a sweat walking back in. Here. There you gobble again. Straight ahead. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So there's that's east. The borders, the corner of the borders that way he's he's headed. We can cut him off in the morning and kill him. towards him closer? I don't think so. Well, it's five to seven. They weren't gobbling until five after yesterday. Let's just sit tight and listen for a few minutes so it can get just a little bit lighter so we can see the ground. Yeah. He's gobbling basically in the dark. I mean, there's a little bit of light, not much. Gotta be kidding me. I say we go back this way. Where did they come in from? I don't know. Maybe. How did they get in here without seeing our truck? It don't matter if they see your truck. Huh? It don't matter if they see your truck. People are going to go where they want to go. So, yeah, not a very good second morning. We roosted this bird yesterday evening, came in here early this morning, walked half a mile to get back in here. Bird starts gobbling, and we're trying to get on position on him, and 
all of a sudden a flashlight hits us in the eyes. And the guy's kind of waving us off. He's actually back down the trail the way we came in from. I don't know why he's waving us off. Obviously, he sees that we're in here already. And uh, it's probably clear that he parked at our truck and came in. And we're going to find out a little bit because the guy would have just done hit the ground and ran towards the public or private land. And he's probably sneaking through the woods trying to shoot him out of the tree this morning. Probably spooked him that way. He never, he's never made a call yet that we've heard. So he's no, obviously he's, he's stalking that bird. All, all these guys, they don't really call that much. They, they just keep trying to get him to gobble and they try to get close the distance. It's like the guy with the crow call yesterday. Yeah. He was trying to keep him gobbling and then kill him by sneaking up on him. You don't hear these hens talking that much, so. Anyway. It's not been in the morning, we hope. So we're going to skedaddle. We're going to go to a spot that Doug scouted yesterday and he saw some birds uh, in the area. So we're going to do a little running gunning over there. All right, folks, we, uh, cut the block here. There's no other vehicles parked in this area. And this is where Doug scouted yesterday. And we saw five hens as we drove around. Three went up this road, one down the road a little bit, and then another hen by itself. We confirmed that one hen's an adult hen. So I don't know what's going on with birds. Make sure you- uh, hens already. Make sure you tell everybody that we, we did a thorough scouting of other hunters this morning, and we got this place to ourselves, it looks like. That was the first thing I said, Doug. Oh, you, you did? Listening? Yeah. I said we cut Can the block. Can you talk louder, please? We cut the block and there was no birds. No birds. Yeah, there's no birds back here. No other vehicles around. Where should we start calling? Right here. Okay. Where are you going? If you call and they come running out into the road. I'm glad I got you with me. I didn't even think about that. At, based on your calling yesterday, those gobblers loved you. So I guess I should call. Yeah. I injured. You listen? You, you injured what? Your tip of your tongue? <laughs> Where are you going? I'm trying to get away from you to listen. Oh. You ever hunt with anybody else in your life? I hunt with you too much. <laughs> You want to just set up and see if they drag something back? Gobble. Yep, you hear it? Let's go. Oh, let me get set up before you start yapping. Where's that decoy at? I got so many freaking trees in my way. You got to shoot him before he gets to the decoy. You hear that one? Mm -mm. Let it go. That's a game warden. Are they allowed to be back here riding foilers? No. Well, they obviously don't read the game rules and know this is a hunting and there's no four wheelers. You need a permit and they don't really pass them out for four wheeler activity. So they're out joy riding. God dang, we need to back up and chase the gobble. Yeah. Let's do that. Let's go after the gobble. We got four of those interrupting us. 
<laughs> Folks, we just got screwed up again. Yeah. God dang it. What's the odds of that on public land? <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. I injured myself laughing with the crow staff laugh. Oh. oh, you're kidding me. I've got a backup gun. Folks, that's why you shoot Mossberg. Are you freaking kidding me? How does it unwind itself? Oh, you're videoing this too? What a... <laughs> and the bolt came Hold up. that up again. I'd like to see the two halves of the gun. What kind of model is it? What kind of gun is that? that... It's a pistol. What are you looking for? The bolt fell out too. How big is the bolt? It's just a little. A little one? You'll never find it back here. It could There it is, it's still in the gun. I, oh. gotta, I have to take this off to. Oh, okay. Well, you're using a Mossberg today. Alrighty. Can you handle that? Don't video this, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I already have to listen to the premature shooting deal. And uh, you're videoing it, aren't you? Yeah, I'm getting, I'm gonna put a post of steel of your gun in two pieces. Folks, we had a guy sneak in on us this morning and ruin our hunt after a one and a half mile walk through the woods in the dark. Then we came over here and we set up and we had some four wheelers come and ride right through our decoys. Then we went and rode around and figured this area out and come back and then Shane smashed my gun against a tree. <laughs> he just, I just, I don't know what it is about you. If you want to shoot first, just say it. Okay. I've, I've got a backup gun, it's on my shoulder you can use. It's 10.30. We'll hunt here till noon or something. No, we can stay longer than that. Might as well hunt till 1. Let's get our money's worth. Okay. Here we go. Yeah, he's not that far away. Do we reposition or because he might come in on this side of us? That's why I was listening for that crow fired off. I was like, I bet one's going to gobble. He's not far at all. He may wander over here. Yeah, but he's there. I think there's a little road bed that goes right along that fence. Mm -hmm. he, he could come down it and come right behind us. Definitely. But we're going to be in a horrible position. But. We got all this camera stuff. Or I'd crow call him and keep him gobbling until I got close enough. Oh, we don't need to get any closer. He's right. only 200 yards. I almost think we should grab our stuff and go move that side of the decoy. And face up, face up this way. Well, he's still got some distance. If you got a Jake decoy and he comes out, he's going to go whip it. Yeah, but what if he comes right by us right here and it, sees it'll us? It'll be at a trot, probably. <clears throat> Let's let him gobble again on his own. Right there. He's this far. He's over here now. No, I thought he's back over that way. Yeah, he's straight that way. Yeah. Earlier he was over there. He's coming around. 
He's coming in, I think. <clears throat> just sit, wait him out and see what happens. You just gotta be ready because he could pop out right there in front of us. You don't have to aim the whole way, but. Get him, get him, get him, get him. <laughs> oh, we got the laugh. <laughs> this is a nice dog. Look at that head, though. Look at that head. Just... It's pouring blood. You're losing weight. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're in, they ain't like last year, right? No, but they're pretty good. Man, you know how pumped I am right now? Because we I can were. Tell. You've, been we, real, you've been a real prick the whole time, but now look at you. I was. We were in the dumps. I was, and uh, Doug was like, "Man, I'm I'm proud of you. You still want to go back there hunting? I mean, what else we, can we do? We come all right, over to Florida, exactly. but yesterday evening I roosted the bird. After yesterday morning's fiasco with hunters all around us, oh. so I went to a different area, secluded where I didn't think anyone can get to it but from one, one location and, uh, or one gate. We went in there this morning and we were in there well before light. And we decided to, to take the trail back out a little bit to get around this bird that was gobbling. And somebody's flashing their flashlight out, shining it, waving us off. So I wanted to go up to them and ask them, how did they get back in here just to see if they came the same route we did. And I was like, you know what, whatever. So we circled back around the bird and, we finally said, you know what, let's let, let him have it go after something else. He wasn't parked where I was parked, but he was parked close enough that he should have known that we might be in the area. But it's public land, so what do you do? So then we left and came here and set up. Yeah. And a, and a group of kids and I guess their dad or yeah, something. Yeah, two four-wheelers. and Two four-wheelers come by us. And we heard a bird gobble. It's probably this guy gobbled way back up in here. Exactly. And then... Uh... We'd run, we went out to the road and chewed their butts about riding around here because you're not supposed to be in here. Yep. And they go, are you turkey hunting? Because there's a bunch of turkeys back in there. And, <laughs> yeah, really? We know. <laughs> Straight right that there. way. He's, we set up right here. He's really close. No, he's not Do it close. again. He's, he's a good little ways. Really? Yeah. 
When I cut my ears, he sounds real close. Well, that's because you're cupping your ears. But he's right there. Yeah, he's too How do you want to get there? Straight to him. All right. I'm trying to talk to the camera. And they can't see my face. All right, f all right folks, you just got to look at my silhouette. We came uh, down to, I guess, it's Central Florida, right? Yesterday morning we got rained out, so we decided to come down here to another public track. And it's just getting daylight, and we got one goblin. So we need to head to him. Yeah, we're going to head towards him and get closer. You ready? Listen. We might have should have stayed up the trail. I'm telling you. I don't think he's that far away, actually, because look how much he's changed. I think we should set up on the trail. Yeah, let's go back to where we, where we were just a moment ago. He's still sitting in the tree. I think he's about six yards closer. <laughs> when? a couple calls to him his way. Let's keep it sporadic like every couple minutes we'll throw a call or two. He cut you off. Yeah, but we should, we should if he stops gobbling, we should go to him. Yeah. I kind of wish he is. At the, I think he's right next to the truck. Give him, a, give him a minute or two of silence. I see, he sounds like he's on the ground now and closer. Jeez, we should just walk right to him. These woods are at this level or open forever. This, hey, you know, what's, when you, whenever you ask what's the, the biggest asset to have while turkey hunting, 90% of it is patience. Oh, I know. I'm, I'm being impatient. You're right. Thanks for calming me down. <laughs> it's, it's Mosquitoes real. are wearing my butt. It's, it's real early right now. We'll see what happens. Next guy will be 50 yards closer. Or another bird could sneak in. My legs want to go. My legs just want to go after him. Yeah, I think we ought to move a little closer. Yeah, show him some Just love. one tree closer. <laughs> Let's move. Still waiting. Let's go right to there. Follow yeah. me. Cypress Give thing. him a little. Jeez, we are set up. I'll sit right there. Here, give me the decoy. He's right there. Yeah.
just go quiet and see what happens. What? Let's just go quiet and see what happens. I bet he came in real fast and saw us. No, no, no. I think he's on his way now. Ooh, that's closer. Okay, he's right in front of us. Here it comes. How'd I miss that first shot? <laughs> That's called I, excitement. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I was shaking so bad over here. <laughs> Way to go, Shay. I got the, I ended up getting the strutter. Did you? Yeah, I was shooting at this one, the one that came in first. I don't think I got down on my gun. I, Cause I was trying to make sure that I didn't bump the camera. I'm thinking of 10,000 things at the same time. And uh, hey man, <sighs> my heart was pounding <laughs> so hard. Oh man, that's cool. We got some nice sharp hooks and a dandy beard. Look at his wings, they're so dark. That's right there is Osceola all day long, right there, the black wings. Look nice how, beard. Look how black they are though. Look at that though. That's inch and uh, that's over an inch right there. This one right here is an inch, I think. Well, pretty bird though. He doesn't even have some barcode on some of those wings. Yeah, they're almost solid black right there on the ends, the mm -hmm. prime, the, the end feathers. Ah, oh, man, they, they beat that decoy up. Oh man. That's a new decoy I'm using this year. It's made by a company called Lucky Duck. They're, they're well known for waterfowl uh, decoys. And Dave Constantine actually carved the uh, master mold for these decoys. And I went down and visited them before they had even built, finished uh, manufacturing these decoys and checked them out and kind of gave a little input or my, or my opinion on you know, what I thought of it. They've got a great design, the head's upright. Red, white, and blue can be seen from all directions. They're really lightweight and they, they don't cost a whole lot. I thought I was gonna be upset at us. So we, we met up with two other guys that were <laughs> at the gate as we came in here. And they've been hunting since opening day. So this will be Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Today's Tuesday? Tuesday, yeah. Okay, so four days they've been hunting. And they've heard gobbles off and on, but they haven't had any birds they could work. And Take us through the mist, Shane. Well, yeah. You know, both of us were really excited. Uh, I think I heard Doug's heart beating over there. I wasn't sure if it was uh, a <laughs> grouse did. over there. Do, 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 do. <laughs> but, uh, Man, I was I was beside myself. You know, this was my first Osceola in six years. First chance to hunt. I've been coming down here. This is the fifth trip down here, and I've been filming mostly other people. And I'm like, don't screw this up, Shane. You know, all the thoughts going through your head. And I kind of got the camera in position, and I moved my hand, and I just knew they were going to catch. And I, I guess I just kind of rushed my shot, and I and that that tight of a pattern that close didn't bode so well they took off running but i could see that white head of, of this one and i took my time on the second shot and uh and laid him down so did you happen to mention that uh i didn't miss on my shot the other day the viewers saw that oh okay <laughs>